welcome to Culture Wire. I'm your host, Meg Schiffler. Today we're at Recology, which is San Francisco's solid waste transfer and recycling center. Why are we at the dump today for Culture Wire? Well, they're celebrating 20 years of one of the most incredibly unique artist residency programs. And we're here to learn more about the program from some of the resident artists and from director Deborah Monk. Um, welcome to Culture Wire, Deborah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, can you tell us how this program began 20 years ago? I can. The program began 20 years ago. Jo Hansen is our founder, and she was an environmentalist and an activist and an artist and back in the 70s. And she would uh, she started these street sweeping campaigns in the in the city, and she involved kids, and they started doing anti litter campaigns, and they had an exhibition at City Hall. So the, the city officials heard about her and her efforts and they invited her out here to this facility. So we thought it would coincide with our efforts to get folks to recycle. It's a great education tool. Since then, we've had 95 professional artists come through and 25 student artists. So how has the program grown and changed over the years? And, and where is the program at today in terms of what you have to offer artists when they come and what the public might engage with too? In the beginning, most of the artists worked with metal and wood, and they were sculptors or mixed media, what, what you would expect from a program like ours. And over the years, we've really tried to, to include artists that work in all different types of mediums, so conceptual artists, for example, or installation artists, or photographers, videographers. And that's really expanded the program out. Um, I've followed your program for a long time, and it's becoming so dynamic right now with your vision of different kinds of artists engaging here. Why would an artist want to come here? Mainly I think it's the materials. It's the access to the materials and we give them a lot of support. So they spend four months and then when they start it's an empty studio and they get a shopping cart and they go out into the public disposal area and they, put, they go, we call it the big store and they go shopping and they take the materials back and they work in the studio. So it's, a, it's kind of a four month reprieve so that they can really concentrate on their body of work. One unique aspect about Recology is that do you have the only sculpture garden <laughs> at a dump in the, in the nation? Is well, that well, true? I, I think it is. We have the only artist in residence program at the dump in the nation. It's kind of based on the work Muriel Ukulis was doing many years ago in New York but it's the only kind of formal, structured artist-in-residence program. We do have a three-acre sculpture garden with about 25 sculptures made by artists, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. A lot of the plants that, you're, that you'll see are, were pulled out of the garbage and we used our compost to transplant them. And a lot of the pathway is lined with um, rubble from the earthquake, from the freeways, when we took the freeways down during the earthquake. But we tour about 5,000 people a year through our facility, both adults and children. So we talk to them about recycling, resource conservation, and they get an opportunity to meet the artists. That's fantastic. Well, let's go meet some of your current artists. Okay, great. Well, here we are with Lauren DeChocho, current artist in residence at Recology, in your studio space. Yep. Hi, Lauren. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Can you tell us how long you've been here so far and what you're working on? Sure. We started our residency on June 1st. So we came into the studio then and spent most of the first couple weeks just digging around in the trash. Um, and while I'm here, I'm continuing my body of work, kind of making these fiber hand-sewn and hand-embroidered um, objects of our day-to-day -day life. Can you describe some of the things that you've been making while you're here? You know, I'm standing um, next sure. to something kind of amazing. Yeah, I've started kind of, I think a lot of my work about these qualities of lightness and weight. So I've been thinking a lot while I'm here about kind of things floating through the air, because mm -hmm. also it's very windy down here. So um, there is a piece of sheet music up there that I've embroidered. Um, and then just a pamphlet about um, fearing death. Um, like these, <laughs> this is a dead <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> um, this is what I'm working on right now. This is a greeting card that I found. I'm making an embroidered uh, for our friend hand. who's very special. So you know, while we were looking at this, I glanced down and there's <laughs> this whole little amazing still life on top of a book about Marcel Duchamp, yeah. <laughs> which is ridiculous yeah. <laughs> and amazing. Um, so I'm really interested in kind of the serendipity of these still life compositions here because when you go into the garbage you see this arrangement of objects that's completely spontaneous and accidental and probably one of the least thought of compositions. You know, people are getting rid of this stuff, they never want to see it again. 
holds no real value to, value to them because they're disposing of it. Well, now we're here in another Recology studio with Abel Rodriguez. Hi, Abel. Hi. Uh, what made you want to do this residency at the dump? What attracted you to apply for this, this special program? Who would want to come to the dump? I guess that's the yeah. first question, right? Yeah. And for me, being in a situation that you're not comfortable in has always been the best. What materials were you immediately attracted to when you started going through the, you know, the volume of what's available here? Uh, well, there's, there's a lot of books, actually, and I think that's one of the things that hits me the most because books have always been important to me in terms of understanding, language, and, and art in general. So um, also being a graphic designer, going straight to the magazines and seeing all this printed material being discarded has, has also been incorporated into my work. And of course, always uh, just wood in general or any kind of plastic uh, form or anything like that. So talk me through some of the pieces that you've made while you've been here. Let's, you know, I'm really drawn to this piece. The first thing was that attracted to me was the printed surface. It was actually a poster for the Pacific Center. It was a silk screened, watercolored, it was about eight feet long poster. So uh, in terms of the flat work, I, I work with a lot of collage. So being able to cut into it, add into it, remove parts from it, incorporate other collages from it, is, it's part of the process of negotiating uh, its final form. And then how do you jump from the two-dimensional works that you create to the three-dimensional works and maybe, I'm conjecturing, back from the 3D to the, two, the 2D? I think everything's in the process of becoming. Um, things are never fully set or settled. The sculptures are being made while I'm doing the collages and vice versa. Uh, the drawings come from the sculptures, the sculptures come apart, they become part of something else. So there's always this, this figuring out of where things belong or where they could pair up with something else or how they could bracket themselves to something else. The end goal is to possibly see one of these quote unquote collage plans be built out and actually create a structure that, that reflects back onto the flat work. So Deborah, thank you so much for allowing Culture Wire to come and visit this amazing facility and learn more about the Artists in Residence program at the Dump. Is there anything that you'd like our viewers to know before we sign off today? Yeah, actually we have art exhibitions every three months, every four months actually. And we invite the public to come out. Everybody's welcome to come out. We have food and sometimes we have games and bands. So it's a really great time out here. Also, from June to September, we accept applications from Bay Area artists, so we encourage artists who work in all mediums to apply because we want to get as many artists from the Bay Area out here so they can have the same experience as um, Lauren and Abel. How many artists a year do you host here? Six artists a year, and we receive about 108 applications. And so we have very competitive. Very competitive, yes. But everyone should be encouraged yes, to apply. Yes, absolutely. That's fantastic. Well, thanks again for hosting us, Deborah. Thank you for including us in Culture Wire.